Hi, my name is Matt. I'm a car AV editor at Crutchfield, and I'm here today to talk about a very popular question our customers have, how to match amplifiers with subwoofers. Now, there are four areas we encourage people to consider when making these combinations. The first consideration is power. And with power, it's actually pretty straightforward. You want to match your amplifier's power output with the power handling specs of your subwoofer. In practical terms, this means if your subwoofer can handle up to 300 watts, you want to make sure that your amplifier is putting out 300 watts. There are a couple keys here. The first thing is to make sure you're paying attention to the RMS specification on your amps and subs. RMS stands for root mean square, and it's a complicated mathematical formula that basically determines how a component is going to perform under normal listening conditions on a continuous basis. You'll also see peak power specifications. But these just indicate how a given component will perform during a brief musical burst, like a big drum hit or a guitar flourish. But they don't indicate how a component is going to perform continuously under normal listening conditions. So when you're matching power specs, always pay attention to the RMS specifications. One more thing to consider. If you plan to use one amplifier to power more than one subwoofer, and this is a very common thing, make sure that the RMS output of your amplifier matches the total combined RMS power handling of all the subwoofers. So if you have two subwoofers that handle 300 watts RMS each, make sure that your amplifier will put out 600 watts RMS. The second thing to consider is impedance. Now, impedance can be a tricky concept, but at its most basic, it's the natural resistance a subwoofer has to the flow of current from an amplifier. In simple terms, the amplifier pushes out power, and the subwoofer pushes back just a little bit. Now, when we talk about connecting a subwoofer to an amplifier, we say that it presents a certain impedance load to the amplifier. Conversely, when we talk about amplifiers, we notice that their power ratings are at a given impedance. Now, when you're shopping, you're going to see subwoofers that are rated usually either at 4 ohms or at 2 ohms. And when you're shopping for amplifiers, you'll see that they're often rated for 2 ohm loads and 4 ohm loads. So why would you go with a subwoofer with a lower impedance rating? Well, lower impedance means it's going to extract more power from an amplifier. And if you look closely, you'll see that an amplifier's power ratings are dependent on the impedance load, and that their output at 4 ohms is usually lower than their output at 2 ohms. So when you're trying to match subwoofers and amplifiers, make sure that the amp you're interested in is rated to handle the impedance load of the subwoofer you're interested in. Now with subwoofers, there are ways to manipulate the wiring so that you can get the impedance load that you want. Now, should you go 2 ohms or 4 ohms? Well, it doesn't really matter. One isn't better than the other, necessarily. It's just that, again, at lower impedances, you're going to get more power from your amplifier and get a little more output. With single subs, many of them have dual voice coils that let you either wire them for a 2 ohm load or use a switch to select between 2 ohms and 4 ohms. And with multiple subwoofers, there are ways to wire them so that you can get a 2 ohm load or a 4 ohm load or even all the way down to a 1 ohm load. And if you'd like to learn more about wiring your subs to achieve a certain impedance load, we have another article and video that we invite you to check out when you're done with this one. The third area of consideration is amplifier channel configuration. The most common way to power a subwoofer is with a mono amp, which is designed in terms of frequency response and power output to drive your subwoofer setup. Now, you can use it to power one subwoofer or more than one subwoofer. You just want to make sure that the impedance specs and the power specs all match. You can also use a multi-channel amp to power a combination of full range speakers and your subwoofer. For example, you can use a four-channel amp to power full range speakers with its front channels and then combine the rear channels using a technique called bridging to power your subwoofer. Now to bridge an amplifier, you would connect the positive terminal of the subwoofer to say the right positive speaker output of the amplifier. And then you would connect the negative terminal of the subwoofer to say the left negative speaker output of the amplifier. This allows you to combine the channels into one channel that puts out more power than the two channels do independently. When you're shopping, if you do want to go this route, just make sure that the amp you're interested in can be put into bridged mode and that the impedance and power specifications of the amplifier in bridged mode match your subwoofer. Another popular option is a five-channel amp. A five-channel amp basically combines a four-channel amp and a mono amp into one chassis. That way, you can power your front and rear full-range speakers with the four-channel section, 
and then use the mono section to power your sub or subs. The advantage here is that you can power all your speakers, but only have to make power and ground connections for one amplifier instead of two. We also carry a variety of other multi-channel options, like six and eight channel amplifiers, many of which are bridgeable to be able to drive a combination of full range speakers and subwoofers. The last area to consider is the enclosure or box that you're gonna put your subwoofer in. Now, there are many kinds of subwoofer enclosures, but we're only gonna focus on the two most common, sealed and ported. With a sealed box, you're generally gonna get tighter, punchier, and more accurate bass, but they're a little less efficient. So if you wanna go with a sealed box, you probably want a subwoofer and an amplifier that are rated for higher power output. Ported boxes, as the name implies, feature a hole or a slot that allows the woofer cone to push air out of the box to enhance the bass effect. So you're gonna get slightly boomier bass, a little more resonance, but they're also more efficient so it takes a little less power to reach the same volume level as a sealed box. Now, every port has what's called a tuning frequency. Usually this is under 40 hertz, and it's a frequency at which the port naturally starts to vibrate. This can cause unwanted resonance or muddiness in your bass sometimes. So if you're going with a ported box, we very much recommend choosing an amplifier that has a subsonic filter. This lets you dial in the filter so that you can block the frequencies at this point and below so that the port doesn't vibrate and you don't get any unwanted coloration in your music. So to sum it all up, when you're shopping for an amplifier and a subwoofer, make sure that the power and impedance specs of the amp and the sub you're interested in match. Consider what kind of amplifier you want to use for your setup and then determine whether or not you want to use a sealed or a ported box. And if you need more help, putting together the ideal sub and amp combo, give us a call or chat with one of our advisors online.